Hi and welcome back to another um, demo. Today I'm going to be sharing another one of my daily sky practices. Um, it's what I've been doing for more than three, three and a half years now. Um, at least one a day and I don't just paint the sky, I usually paint the land or the sea below it. But I focus on the sky as it's the area that I'm the most interested in when I do my landscape painting. The sky is the thing that draws me towards painting. Um, so I'm just going to share um, another one of my sort of wet in wet experimental stormy skies. So I've, um, I've wet the paper with horizontal brush strokes, um, leaving a few dry patches here and there. Um, and now this is my small pro art Ron Ranson Harky brush and I'm putting in some raw sienna. It's Cotman raw sienna and it's a bit paler than most other raw siennas. It's a beautiful colour, highly recommended, um, especially for skies. So that just takes away from the harsh white of the paper. Um, and now this is a mixture of um, indigo, Prussian blue and burnt umber, all picked up at the same time on my brush, straight from the tube. So it's really rich and highly pigmented. And I'm putting it across my paper, um, just streaking it across for a sky and then pulling across some sort of dry brush horizontally for the water, for the sea, because it's going to be another another seascape. This is a brush full of water across the top to get that wet in wet sky really working. As it begins to run down the page, I can tip it and tilt it, watching as the paint and water runs into various parts of the brush strokes that I've just put in. It will resist where there's dry paper and it will follow where there's wet paper. Now I can use my large Pro Art Harky brush to um, sort of feather things through, change the shape of things, keep tipping and tilting, keeping an eye on it and watching it, um, trying to bring it down in a kind of a distant rain cloud or storm cloud that kind of comes down towards a horizon. That's the idea that I've got at the moment. So I'm trying to manage the flow of the water and the paint and to guide it into the kind of position or the look that I want for the paint. Before I lay it flat, um, I'm just going to wipe off any spare water from the tape so that when it lays flat, that doesn't pull back into the painting and cause runbacks. As soon as I lay it flat, it settles a bit more. It stays more stable because gravity isn't pulling it down because my board previously was at 45 degrees. So the paint was always going to be running down the page. This is my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm just using the flat brush to carefully pull out um, a little bit of paint um, along to get that horizon line just a bit more defined. I think I'm nearly there. I think one more sort of tilt to bring that rain cloud down to the horizon where I've just straightened the horizon. So now hopefully it will just keep running um, and stay in position and I can use my flat brush to lift out that horizon line if I need to again. Because sometimes the paint will close up a lifted line like that when it's still very wet. It's now nice and dry and you can see that it's dried a lot lighter so it doesn't look quite as, um, as stark as it looked when I was painting it. So you do have to go a bit darker when you're painting because it will always lighten up quite a lot. Now I've decided to paint in a headland so I'm going to use Payne's Grey and Indigo mixed together um, and my flat brush again and I'm going to just paint in a very thin headland. Maybe a couple of little islands at the end and I'll put those in with a calligraphy brush once I've got that headland about right. I don't want it to be too big or too noticeable. This painting is all about the sky. I 
And I'm happy with the headland there and the few little tiny islands that I put in with the tip of a calligraphy brush. Um, I think now all I need to do really is to use my flat brush and, and just get in a few horizontal brush strokes here and there across the sea just to um, add a little bit more life and movement to the sea here and there being careful to retain most of my dry brush um, because most of my dry brush there is I think what's sort of giving a bit of sparkle to the foreground and the unpainted patches in the sky that represent the clouds um, they need to sort of be reflected, I think, in the sea. So the dry brush does a really good job of doing that, the dry brush sparkle. So sometimes I'm putting in paint, other times I'm lifting out paint with the clean damp brush, um, but keeping my brush strokes sort of horizontal, sort of lo some longer than others, um, so that I try and just get that kind of ripple effect on the sea or wave effect. And just softening up and getting a bit more light underneath the headland now in the distance. So that's just a little bit of water across the back and then lifting out with a tissue. And as the Payne's grey and indigo dries back, it dries back quite light. Um, and so I can keep going in and getting slightly darker here and there and just slowly begin to kind of um, balance up the tones in the water with those in the sky to a certain extent. I'm not looking for a reflection or anything like that. I'm just looking for um, some much darker um, brush strokes, horizontal ones, across the foreground on the left where my sky is, is very dark. And as I say, keeping the lighter areas um, on the right side, um, which sort of reflect those light areas in the sky. And I hope you can see that where I've darkened up the headlands a bit as well, um, that has balanced the tones a lot more. And with this last little bit of dark uh, brushwork in the water, I shall call this done. And here it is with the tape removed. And with the clean white border, um, I think it, this sky looks quite convincing and quite dramatic and atmospheric. And it didn't take much work at all. It just took being able to um, sort of understand what the wet in wet process can do for me. Um, and that comes from practice, the tipping and the tilting, um, using really dark paint and lots of water can give you some surprisingly subtle, and beautiful or stark and dramatic results. So I highly recommend um, practicing um, on a daily basis, if you like, um, if you have time. Um, I found it to be one of the things that's helped me to progress the most with my skies and to enjoy the journey because I've really been able to understand um, what the relationship is between the water and the paint in watercolour painting. I think what I love the most about this type of, of watercolour painting is it's so exciting to be able to see these effects come together in front of you as the paint and the water just flow together. And if you use gravity as your friend and to help you to paint. So the tipping and the tilting, which might seem a bit daunting to start with, but becomes second nature after a while, will help you to produce some really unique skies. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy sky painting. Bye.